Hi, it's Marcus from Vaden back here with another Vaden Tips video. Now in my last video I showed you how to deal with long running backend tests in a Vaden Flow application. This week I want to show you how to do the same in a Vaden Fusion application. Now when it comes to the architecture, a Vaden Flow and a Vaden Fusion app are very different in that a Vaden Flow application runs on the server, whereas a Vaden Fusion application runs on the client in the browser. So in Vaden Fusion applications, all the communication with the backend is asynchronous by default. Now that doesn't mean that we can't run into issues. The most common issue that you'll run into is that you have a long running backend task and a user is able to resubmit that same long task to the backend over and over again because they don't know that something is actually happening. So let's take a look at some code that demonstrates this problem and I'll show you how to solve it. All right, so I'm here in a button fusion view. I have a button text field and a button. And whenever I click the button, I call save. Save will call save user in my server endpoint. And that essentially just sleeps for six seconds and then returns the name. We take the return name and we append it to this uh, array. And then we loop over the array and show all the saved values in a unordered list. So let's take a look at how this works without any improvements. So I'm a user, I'll type in my name, if I can type my name like that, and I'll save. I think nothing's happening, so I'll just keep hitting save a bunch of times. And then after a while, these saves are actually starting to happen. And now you notice that we're in a situation where I only wanted to save my name once, but now all of a sudden I've saved my name a whole bunch of times. And this is obviously not what we want to do. It's not leading to the right end result for the user, and it's using up a whole lot more server resources than we kind of wanted to do. So what I actually want to do is I want to keep track if there is an ongoing request, disable these controls so that the user doesn't try to do something, but instead they understand that the save is happening. And then once the save is done, either successfully or unsuccessfully, we can uh, re-enable them. So the way I'll do this is in my code, I'll create a new state property here. If you're unfamiliar with state, it's the new name for internal property in lit2. So I'll call this loading and I'll set it to false by default because we don't have anything loading initially. And what I'll then do is I'll use this loading property to disable things as necessary. So for the text field, we'll use the disabled attribute here using the question mark to mark this as a Boolean attribute. And we'll set it to disabled whenever loading is true. Now we'll do the exact same thing for the button. So we can just copy paste that. And then what I want to do is actually change the button caption depending on that state. So instead of just having save as the caption, we'll check this dot loading. And if we are loading, we'll say saving. And in other cases, we'll say save. Now, the last thing we need to do is actually set that loading state based on what's happening. Fortunately, that's something that's pretty easy to do in an asynchronous method, because it'll essentially be just synchronous programming as far as the, the code reads. The browser engine will kind of suspend this method where it encounters this await keyword, but that's not something that we need to care about. So what we need to do is set this dot loading to true whenever we start saving. And then when we're completed, we'll say this dot loading is equal to false like that. And then let's go ahead and try this out. So again, I'll put in my name, I'll hit save. You see now that it's got grayed out. We see it's saving. And then after a while, we can see the name pops up here. The input gets cleared. And this is, again, available for us to use. All right, so there you have it. A simple way for you to improve the UX of your application by preventing users from uh, launching a bunch of heavy backend operations while they think the app is not responding. If you have any questions about today's video, or if you have ideas for new videos, post them in the comments below. If not, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.